the hit that left the park off the bat of Randy Arozarena in the first. If you're the Dodgers, you're going to have to get aggressive early on the first pitch. Pick one out and try to do damage with it. It's popping. And he picked one out. No damage. Out behind second base. Lau puts it away. One pitch. One out in the sixth. The batter will be Austin Barnes, the number nine man. And now a quick word from T-Mobile, the leader in 5G coverage. One in five U.S. kids may not be able to afford to play next season. Together, we can help little leaguers in your community. Grab your phone and text, and T-Mobile will donate. The reason I say that is because their, their M.O. has always been work the count, work the count, get deep. Well, guess what that did for them early on? It was a lot of strikeouts. And especially these two hitters, I thought, would be aggressive. Good pitch selection by Blake Snell on that first pitch. Here's Barnes showing Bunt taking a ball high. We've already set a record for a World Series game through six innings. We're only in the bottom half of the sixth, but 21 combined strikeouts. Twelve by Dodger hurlers, nine by number four, who finds the bottom corner of the strike zone. One ball, one strike on Barnes. Yeah, he's done a great job jumping out early with all those strikeouts. You can still get a lot of outs without getting the K ball, and that would be the recipe for Blake Snell with nobody on. Nick Anderson getting loose. Just amazing the, the very scenario Kevin Cash was dreading out of 20 of them is kind of this one. Here's one into center and the number nine man Barnes is aboard with one out in the sixth. That's going to be it. Man, you talk about a short leash. 73 pitches, two hits. Nine strikeouts. Snell can't believe it. As Kevin Cash said, these guys need short memories and thick skin because this is the way we do it. And we'll see how it works out. That is the reaction when he saw his manager coming to get the baseball as the Rays dip into their bullpen here in the sixth inning. Up one. At least three opinions on what we just saw transpire a one out hit by Austin Barnes back to the top of the order and Nick Anderson comes into the game his numbers very different than the regular season Snell is now in the dugout watching after initially walking through the dugout and up the tunnel as Mookie Betts consider the fact that Snell held the top three hitters in this Dodger lineup tonight to 0 for 6 with 6 strikeouts. Yeah, uh, you know, general rules. Uh, tell you right after this pitch. It's a 1 0 to Betts. 1 2 0. You know, the, the, the conventional wisdom of, of any time you take somebody out that makes the other team has, happy that you took them out, the guy that comes in better be just as nasty. And they have that. They do have that. But. In a, in a series of three games to two, we talked through this scenario with Kevin Cash, and he was not bashful and being able to tell us this was what he was going to do if the situation called for it. Here's a 2 0. Hard hit and fair. Down the line. Hits the fence. Digging for third is Barnes. They will hold him there on a double by Betts, and the Dodgers are in business in a blink. Here in the sixth. Two oh fastball. Mookie Betts all over it. And these are the bounces down the line you're going to get with those fences. That's why the active infielders have to be all over the place. And an easy double. It could have been a nightmarish. Runs tie scoring scenario for the Dodgers. 
Adamas got there. If he doesn't get there, slide and get to the ball, they may send Barnes. Betts is fighting back a smile as he comes over to fist bump his first base coach. And, you know, here's the thing. I, I know, as you said, and, and we talked to Kevin Cash about this, this was his biggest worry, Snell having more in the tank. I don't think anybody saw five and a third no runs, two singles, nine strikeouts, no walks. And he said he was a tough matchup for Betts. He struck out Betts twice. And now Seeger will dig in. And that's another tough matchup for the Dodgers. But they have to face now Anderson instead of Snell. You got a rhythm pitcher in rhythm in Snell. There was nothing that was going to change that unless you take him out. And you're hoping that your pitchers have that same rhythm that come in. Obviously, that's not the case. And this is a tough situation. You've got Turner on deck. Personally, I would not pitch to Seeger, and I would pitch to Turner with the bases loaded. One half dozen the other and play for the double play. But they're going to try to pitch to Seeger with the infield in. Infield in and swung around to the right for Seeger. Good pitch. Ken Rosenthal, your thoughts. Joe, there's always a reason why managers make moves, and perhaps this was just as simple as third time through the order. But it's difficult to understand, especially with the left, right, left, right situation they have. They could have gone through Muncie at least with Blake Snell. Second and third. One out. And this one gets by Zunino. Tie game. It went the wrong way. And when it goes the wrong way, the catcher cannot be in that position. He's anticipating that ball to break a, tip, a typical slider break, and it didn't. Now Seeger, with any one of a number of things, can give the Dodgers their first lead of game six. Infield still in. Here's a play at the plate. Throw home too late. Dodgers lead. Betts scores. And just like that, the Dodgers are on top by one in the sixth. And just like that, Mookie Betts was ready to run and scored on that ground ball. You can't have the normal defense in with Mookie Betts at third. This is not in enough. Mookie has shown you his ability to read, react, and go. That right there didn't even get an out. You're going to have to be, as a first baseman, jumping off that bag and getting towards home plate as the pitch is being made. He was flat-footed. And now Nick Anderson's got to keep it right here. Still only one out as Seager reaches on the fielder's choice, gets the RBI. And Turner fouls it back, strike one. I said it ten times. It's not just the hitting of Seeger and Betts. It's been the defense. It's been the base running. It's been re being ready to take the extra base. And Kevin Cash has got to be sick with what's happened here after Snell came out just after that single by the number nine hitter Barnes. A double by Betts. A wild pitch for a run that scored Barnes. And a fielder's choice off the bat of Seeger that wasn't even hit 90 feet that puts L.A. on top for the first time tonight. And you know Snell is pleading his case in the dugout. Frustrated he was taken out. Nope. Well, there's something about this game and the psyche of this game when hitters will tell you all you need to know about the dominance of another player. It doesn't always have to be body language. But they know that that pitcher on the mound has the edge that moment in that given moment. And when he gets taken out of the game, you intuitively think, thank you. We now have a chance. 
And it certainly played its place right out here in this inning. Turner hits one into left. Back at the wall. It is caught. On the warning track as Turner just got under it. And a loud second out here in the sixth. And here comes Kevin Cash. Going to make another move. And Turner knew it. So with Max Muncy coming up, two runs in, the first Dodger lead of the night, Snell out of the ball game. Mookie Betts smiling, another pitching change for Tampa Bay. Mookie Betts made this happen. The one out double to set it up and then was ready to run on that ground ball by Seager. We'll show you another angle of it. His base running has been perfection. In this postseason, Aaron Loop takes over and Muncie takes a strike. Betts has stolen six, but both he and Seeger have been on their toes with anything in the dirt or on contact while they've been at third. Happened in the LCS, and it's happened again here in the World Series. They've put pressure on this defense the whole series as the count goes to 0-2. Yeah, this is just a baseball 101 playing that most guys haven't perfected. Well, Mookie Betts in his speed, but his reaction time and understanding the combination of both reading the bat and knowing that your talents are just that far superior than the rest, and he just didn't flinch. Nothing in two. Luke brings it. Once he takes it, Tom Verducci weigh in on what we've seen here in the sixth. Well that play there with Mookie remembering game one they did not hold him on at third base and he scored on the contact play even held on he scored. But going back to that decision to have Anderson pitch to Betts, Mookie slugged just 218 against lefties that was the worst in the major leagues. He brought in a right handed fastball pitcher who had given up runs in six consecutive appearances in the postseason. It was a very curious move because of the matchup. And because of the way Blake Snell was pitching. The line on Snell, five and a third, one run, two hits, no walks, nine strikeouts. Here's a 2 2 now to Muncie. Full count to the most patient hitter we've seen in October, Max Muncie. Well let's also credit the bullpen for the Dodgers which at times has been a little shaky this postseason they kept this game at one to nothing. And they've been equally as dominant as Blake Snell was for the Rays. Runner goes on a ground ball to the right side a second. Adamas makes the play and the Dodgers lead. This inning will be talked about for a long time. Pitching change happened. Snell came out. Anderson came in. Dodgers went to work. Back after this from your local Fox station.